of you know someone who's been affected by breast cancer? Most of us do. While I was finishing my PhD at Stanford, one of my close friends got diagnosed with late stage breast cancer that was completely missed and we lost her. This could have been prevented if the cancer was detected early. I'm Mary, I'm co-founder and CEO of Isono Health and we're enlisting the power of AI and ultrasound to fight breast cancer. Every year, 1.7 million women get diagnosed with breast cancer screening and the numbers are rising. Over a billion women need breast cancer screening, but the unmet big gap is that only 250 million women have access to breast cancer screening. We need to change that. Access to breast cancer screening is the key to survival of breast cancer. The current screening for breast cancer mammogram, besides the fact that it has radiation is very uncomfortable, it, the X-ray mammogram does not work for half a woman who have dense breasts. That's actually 70% in Asian women. As a result, one in three breast cancers are missed at early stages. That's one in three. Ultrasound is very sensitive and handy, is very scalable and most affordable technology worldwide. But the problem is that it's highly dependent on the operator skill. So if you're in a city high-end hospital in the city versus a rural community hospital, you get vastly different results. Also, it takes about 20, 30 minutes, so it's not really ideally from workflow. And globally, there are just simply not enough specialists. For example, in US, there's one uh, radiologist for every 12 women. In India, that's one per 200. There are a lot of efforts to make breast cancer screening more better and more accessible. There is uh, companies that are coming up with more smaller, more affordable handheld ultrasounds. Uh, companies like G and Siemens are making automated ones that are making it more use, uh, operator independent. And of course, there's AI technologies that help improving the diagnostic accuracies. And as mentioned, there are MRI technologies that are coming up that are adding more than just the image and uh, improving the diagnostic accuracy. At Isono Health, we combine all these and more in one platform. Our system is a compact scanner that combines all the sensors and electronics in a very small compact form factor that fits right here in the palm of your hand. We combine that with a positioning accessory that looks like a bra for positioning and repeatable uh, imaging. And of course, we use deep learning technologies to help with diagnostic accuracy and better uh, the way it works is that with a simple press of a button, you can start the scan without the need for a special operator. And the scanner rotates 360 degrees and captures the entire breast volume in just one minute. One minute compared to 20 minutes that with the current ultrasound system. And here you can see an example of how it works. And it connects to a tablet or a laptop. One of the important aspects of our system is that we can offer 3D visualization of masses, especially captured in a supine position where the breast is in its natural shape. This is really important for the physicians that are treating the, the uh, patient, like surgeons, uh, oncologists, radiation oncologists, and uh, this is a feature that is really, really valuable. And you can see this is actually from a patient. You can see the breast in any angle you want. You can set, uh, set up 3D planes. One of the things we offer, which is uh, very uh, innovative. You can look at the coronal view. So these are some of the really uh, visualization aspects of the system that allow for better localization of masses. And as we are scanning in real time, as was mentioned uh, uh, yesterday, that one of the problems with AI and imaging is that the fact that a lot of times the AI is not real time. What we do is real time uh, monitoring for masses and identification of the uh, regions of interest. And beyond just looking at the 2D image, one of the novelty uh, aspects of our system is that we look at the entire 3D spectrum of ultrasound. So from that, that means that from the raw RF data, the higher frequency data, we can extract acoustic biomarkers. Uh, by that, I mean things like density, vascularity, elasticity. So our system, even though on the surface, it looks like a 2D image, on the background, we're capturing 3D data. And we've done some clinical investigations with over 100 patients. And this is another one in 2018. And even though on the background we're capturing the 3D data, on the front, the doctor, the physician is looking at an image that's very similar to what they're used uh, to look at. This really helps with the adoption uh, of our system. Uh, 
Another aspect of the system that I mentioned that is currently not available is the repeatability aspect of it. We can capture really fast images that are repeatable over time. So this allows us to not only capture a snapshot, but monitor changes. And we see our platform uh, initially starting for breasts and expanding to other parts of body as a platform for personalized care of the uh, breast health and beyond. Our system has no radiation. It takes just one minute to do the scan, and you get actionable feedback with our web and mobile app that allows for better patient engagement enhancement, and it's so easy to use. It can be used in a uh, non-traditional uh, clinical setting. And how we see this uh, working is that Beyond the fact that in a radiology setting, our system can be used by a non-trained operator, first initially in breast cancer centers, but as we move forward, we see this, that the future of screening is in the primary care, walk-in clinics, employee wellness programs, and eventually at home. It's a system that you could use at home to monitor yourself. And as we move forward, we see the real value in the longitudinal data that we collect that will allow us for a more personalized and risk-based uh, breast cancer screening. Because simply that today's uh, technologies that is a one solution for all doesn't work, it's expensive, and we know with this technology we can make it better and faster. And we're going to start with high-risk women and expand to that, that to women in dense breast. And there's 100 million, uh, million women who can access this technology for breast cancer screening. And I mentioned all the other technologies, but I'd be remiss not to mention there are also other technologies such as thermography that are improving access to breast cancer screening in a low-cost fashion. They're not clinically uh, approved yet, but they're working on it. And overall, all these different technologies are improving access to breast cancer or screening. Where are we? We've, um, uh, we've already developed the hardware and software. You saw the scanner. Uh, this year we're working on manufacturing, expanding our uh, clinical studies. We're working with some great clinical partners, Cleveland Clinic, Texas Medical Center, Sloan Kettering right here in New York. And with the help of all these partners, we expect to be on the market next year. And the year after is when we expect this is something that can be used at home for self-monitoring. We have a fantastic team of uh, rock star hardware and software engineers and uh, uh, data scientists, and uh, we're also hiring, so uh, come talk to me. And uh, we also have some fantastic advisors, and all of us together are really excited uh, to change the standard of care and uh, bring uh, uh, fibrous cancer and save women's lives. So I hope you can join us. Thank you.